Hello viewers, Aaron off Roder here. Today I'm going to be running you through the Toyota air intake design fault. Now, this issue is present across all new 2.8 litre turbo diesel models with the 1GD engine code, which is Hilux, Prado and the Fortuna. In this video I'm going to be giving you a broad overview of the issue itself, a few small things that you can do to prolong the life of your engine, how to clean your MAF sensor and how to get out of the bush if your car gets stuck in limp mode. Just before I dive into the background information, I'm going to give you a quick look of what's happening in here, how much dust is getting past my filter into my engine, and why Toyota don't want to know about it. Should I run the intro? Yeah, let's run the intro. If I've still got you there, let's get into it. Firstly, I'm going to unclip and check my air filter. So there's four clips, each corner, and then you should be able to lift it up. So my car's got about 16,000 kilometers on it now. At 8,000, just before the first service, I heard a bit of a rumor and I checked and there was dust all through the system. So I bring it to their attention at the first service after I've done my little fix. Anyway, they've since cleaned it all out and gave it a wipe, but I'll dig up the photos of what I got originally. So here's the picture that I got originally. So as you can see, this mesh screen here, I put one finger wipe across it. That's how much dust was in there for 8,000 Ks. I'll pull this filter out. This is still the original filter. And with Toyota's cap price servicing, they don't actually budget for a new air filter at 10,000 kilometers. So this is my service documentation here. I'll read it word for word. So job number eight, dust in intake. Confirmed dust in air intake. Found a large amount of dust in air filter. Cleaned as best as possible during service, but recommended replacement cost of new air filter is $59.27. So I'm not sure where that sits me legality wise. If something was to go wrong now, I probably should have just replaced it. So then if something does happen, I might have some better legs to stand on. But with the fix now, I've re rectified this problem and I haven't got the dust going past anymore. So to give you a better look and what I'm talking about, I'll remove this now and I'll bring it over there. So I've just got a 10 mil. I'm going to undo this bracket and unplug the MAF sensor. Here, I'll just give you a quick demonstration of the air intake system. I've got a snorkel on here, and then it's got an elbow and a second tube, and it runs inside the guard, and it's got another elbow straight into the airbox. If you've just got the standard airbox on its own, there's a tube, an elbow, and a mesh gauze. So it'll catch leaves, rocks, sand, um, quite large items. From there, it goes into the bottom of the airbox. It's got to go through the filter, and then runs through this, through here. This is the MAF sensor, mass air flow. So it's plain and simple. Anything from here should be clean. From here, through there, and then it goes down this tube straight to the turbocharger. Here we are just providing a bit of background information. This information is not my own. This is a article done by drive.com.au. So full regards to them for doing this. Now, Toyota is refusing to repair a known floor with up to 170,000 Hilux Fortuna and Prado off-roaders in Australia. The design fault can lead to dust intrusion in the air intake leading to significantly reduced power and the disconnection of active safety systems, often while driving in rural and remote areas. Fairfax Media has now experienced a fault in two cars, a Fortuna and a Hilux at times when overtaking at more than 100 kilometers an hour. So that is certainly 
not ideal. It's now been raised as a design issue with Toyota in Japan, a spokesman told Drive they will be working on a redesign of the air intake system, while Toyota have no plans to repair existing cars. Here's another article here, unsealed 4x4, full credit to them for the article, but here's what a filtration expert thinks about Toyota's dust problem. So down here, this is what they've been told. <laughs> the dust that makes its way through the filter is very fine and typically less than five microns in size. Five microns is massive. What can occur is that these very fine particles attach themselves to the sensor electrostatically. It is not an issue of the dust finding their way into any internal components of the MAF sensor. What about the engine? The Toyota spokesperson said, Toyota played down any chance of engine damage from the issue. In reality, it's very likely. So there's plenty of articles telling you what's going on, but I just thought I'd do a video because I've tested my fix for the last 6,000 kilometers and I've done some very dusty conditions and mine is holding up 110% better than what it was. So until Toyota officially release a fix, which I wouldn't be crossing your fingers, um, this really seems like the best method. So if you've got one of these 2.8 Prados, you drive in some dusty conditions, I highly suggest, as a diesel mechanic myself, you go check your filter. Check under here, and if you've got dust under here, you've got a big problem. So the problem actually isn't so much the filter itself. The filter is alright, it's the airbox. The airbox doesn't clamp down along this seal evenly enough and it seems to get past and then onto the clean side. So the best thing that we can do is get some rubber grease and what we do is we run it around the edge of the seal, be quite generous with it and then it actually catches the dust in its tracks and doesn't get past, as you can see by this, clean. So yeah, highly suggest. So I'm just going to run a bit around the edges, just like this. Probably more on the underside actually. So I've just cleaned the stuff off from last time, but yeah, just run a heap of this along here. Don't be scared of it. Just try not to get it on the actual filter itself. So now, when I sit this in here, see how the grease is all along the edges? The top lid will stop any dust getting past. This brings us on to the next thing, the MAF sensor. Now, the MAF sensor is in there. Obviously, the direction of flow is this way. But in here, they've got written to clean the MAF sensor at service. Now, if this is all clean air from here, why should that get dirty? It shouldn't. So, they obviously know about it. Right, so here's my recent service. 10,000 kilometers. So, inspect engine air cleaner so they don't change it. Clean airflow, MAF sensor. Here we are, 20,000 kilometers. Clean airflow, MAF sensor, inspect engine air cleaner. So they don't change it at 20 either, actually. So here we are, replace engine air filter, 30,000 kilometers. Clean MAF sensor once again. So what is a MAF sensor and why is it important? So this is the MAF sensor here. That's the direction of flow out there towards the turbocharger. That's so the engine ECU knows how much air has passed through here and how much fuel it needs to inject to run most efficiently. So, this is a MAF sensor from the rear. It's best explained as a hot wire. So it's got a real fine wire, or actually two of them, real fine wires, and they run a certain predetermined current through them, and the more air that passes past it, the cooler it gets. 
and the more resistance it has. So then it will give a different reading by these pins and that plug to the engine ECM. Now, because this wire is so fine, be very, very careful with it. Also, don't turn your ignition on while it's unplugged because it will throw codes and then you'll have to deal with that. So, here we are, just gonna undo it. Now, the only thing that you're gonna wanna use is specifically Mass Airflow Cleaner. There's a few different brands, but it's important, don't use the wrong stuff. It will wreck it. So this isn't ex as accessible as some I've seen in the past, but just wanna give it a bit of a spray over. Nothing too crazy. So I'd say the real element's down in the inside in there. Quite protected, but yeah, just give it a spray and that's about it. Lastly, let it dry properly for about half an hour or so before you run it. So if you have been having issues and you've determined that is the fault, just clean it, put it back in lightly. Remember there's that seal there. Screw it back together and then we'll install the airbox lid again. Screw it down evenly. Now don't go too hard on these because it's plastic. Snip it up. So I'm gonna reinstall the airbox lid. Now that we've got the grease around there, this should seal up a lot better. And then once I'm finished that, I'm going to um, show you how to do a quick bush reset if you absolutely have to. But there's also some things to be wary when doing that. So stay with me. That's clipped down, sealed up. All I've got to do is put the um, air intake tube back on, line it up with this slot here, and do the clamp up. Now, I'm sure you do this up firm, but not too tight, because you can break the clamp. So you'll feel when it feels pretty firm. Probably right about there, I reckon. I'm going to reinstall this bracket. It sits up there like this. One bolt in there. Check the plug is clean and plug it back in. Easy as that, solid click. Now, just by running that grease around the edge should give you a much better chance of keeping the dust out of your engine. Until Toyota bring out a proper fix, but by the looks of the articles, I don't think they're gonna bring it out for the existing models, but maybe for the new models. But if your car does go into limp mode and you don't know why, you want to be checking a lot of things first. Don't just go straight for it because that can cause you issues. So you want to be checking your vitals, engine oil, coolant level, a few other things like that. Check underneath for leaks, hoses, make sure your hoses are on, your boost hoses that run to your inner cooler, front mount inner cooler, back around, all your turbo hoses. Make sure there's no funny noises, ticks, or anything like that. And then if you're 100% sure that it's nothing like that, and have a look, check your air filter. If there's dust in there, there is a good chance that the mass sensor could be dirty. So you can give it a quick bush reset to get you going. And then depending how far you get, you might be able to get to the dealer. If not, you might have to rectify it just like I showed. So. Depends where you are. If you're right near the dealer, just take it to the dealer. They'll sort it out, but yeah. I haven't personally had mine go into limp mode for that reason. Um, I might have caught it early by doing that mod over there at 8,000 Ks. Just undo your negative, pull it out of the way, pull everything off it. Right, push these away so they're not touching. Make sure you don't have any load on the car either. Like, don't have your lights on when you're disconnecting this. Have your car fully stopped. So yeah, you're not gonna have some big sparks when you undo this. So now, just let that sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then just reconnect it. Your code should be cleared, and then it will go until you get another code, an active code come up. So that might just get you out of trouble. Depends what is wrong. 
Just a simple fix like that could save thousands. So now, at the 20,000 kilometer service, I'm going to get Toyota to put a new filter in this, just so it's documented, and then I should be right from there. Depends how long or how much driving you do in dusty conditions or how long your filter will last. From here, I might start doing it every 15. If you've ever had these issues with yours, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Um, and we can all talk down in the comments and just see what everyone's thoughts are. So if you've liked the video, like and subscribe, and there'll be more of these to come. Peace out.